Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Alex with SoundWords, and in this video, I'm going to be discussing four things that I believe every believer should consider. Coming up. Those four things are simply this. Number one, Bible. Two, apostle. Three, rightly dividing. And four, the gospel. Now, I do got to give a disclaimer before we jump into this video. Number one, my heart and intention of this video is in no way to shame or put anybody down or trash. Not it at all. I'm not going to sit here and say that I am a King James Bible only and fill in the blanks, all that stuff. That's, that's not my heart or, or approach at this at all. I'm going to tell you up front, I read out of, uh, I started with the Message Bible, then I read out of the NIV for seven years, and I did not start reading the King James Bible until 2015. And it's important for you to understand that uh, the way I'm approaching this is from my personal experience, uh, from my own personal examination, and I'm not going to say King James Bible only because uh, that's people can read whatever translation they want to. I'm not here to have dominion over anybody's faith. I'm here to be a helper of your joy. Now, with that said, I'm going to point some things out, and I want you to just look at it and consider this for yourself. So that's the disclaimer. So let's get started with point number one. What Bible should you be using when you're studying? Let's look at a few passages of Scripture. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, Jesus Christ speaking to the circumcision, he tells them, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. That is a very serious claim that the Lord Jesus Christ makes. You know, if you if you look at the the Hebrew um, language, uh, you look at jot and tittles, you know, it's equivalent to periods, semicolons, punctuation marks, whatever you want, but there are no quotations uh, in, in the King James Bible. But the point being made, this is a very serious claim. And again, Jesus Christ says a little bit later in the book, let's go to Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew 24, verse 35, Jesus Christ says again, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. One more passage of scripture. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17, For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. So what did we just read? Well, Jesus Christ, not one jot or tittle shall no wise pass from the law until all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass, but my words shall not pass. Paul says we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. And that word corrupt, you think of uh, corrupt politicians. You think of uh, it's there's always money involved. And you got to consider the fact that here we are in the year 2020. There's over 900 translations of the Bible in the lingu English language today. And this is a whole entire another rabbit hole that you can kind of chase, follow the white rabbit here. But look at the amount of money that publishers are making off of the Word of God. Think about it. You go back 2,000 years ago. Paul writes, For we as not as many which corrupt the Word of God. Well, what was the Word of God then? There was no English language back then. What language were they corrupting? They were corrupting the Hebrew and the Aramaic. They were peddling. They were making money off the Word of God changing the words, adding to the words, subtracting from the words, watering it down, and creating all of these different translations that were corrupt versions of the Word of God. If that was happening 2,000 years ago, do you think that it's happening today? So that is the number one thing that you need to consider. What Bible should you use? Did Jesus really mean what he said? Is there an authorized perfect, preserved Word of God for us today that we can trust knowing without a shadow of a doubt that this is the Word of God. This is a study that took me three years to fight with and spot it tooth and nail. 
and I finally came to the conclusion after my own personal examinations of taking this simple KJV, taking the Holy Bible app, comparing all the translations, and looking at what they're all saying. Folks, they're not saying the same thing. And if you're honest with yourself and you're honest with looking at all of them laying down side by side, you have to see that there is a difference. In the book of Psalms, God says, "Thou, For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. That is a big deal. Jesus Christ, one of the names that he carries is the word, according to 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. And if you look at when Jesus Christ comes to the earth the second time, he's coming in the name of the word of God. So, number one thing is, what Bible are you using to study? Because not all of them say the same thing. And I want to show one simple example, and I want to talk about the faith of Christ. Let's go to Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. This verse was one of the verses that really kind of clicked for me. And in Galatians chapter 2, verse 16, Paul writes, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. If I simply click this and compare it, and read all the other translations, ESV, NIV, NLT, NASB, Amplified Version, New King James. All of these translations change one little word there. They change the faith of Jesus Christ to the faith in Jesus Christ. That completely just changed the whole entire meaning of the scripture. And let me explain this. The faith of Jesus Christ means it's his faith that we've been justified by, uh, not by the works of law, but we've been justified by his faith. Faith in, G- uh, in Jesus Christ is it, no longer is it his, his faith, it's our faith. So we've been justified by our faith. Now this might be something new and it might be confusing, And the next question that someone might ask, well, did Jesus really have faith? I mean, he's God. What does the Bible say about faith? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. There's something that you need to consider. There are two things that God the Father has always required since the beginning. It's faith and works. In Hebrews chapter 11, it's the Hall of Fame chapter. It's all about all of the elders, and, and you look at all of the elders, and I'm talking about for the nation Israel, uh, it talks about all of their faith and their works that they did to please God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders retained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony, that he pleased God. Verse 6, But without faith, it is impossible to please him, For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let's go look at what the scriptures say about Jesus in Matthew chapter 3, verses 15 through 17. Matthew chapter 3, verse 15. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. He's talking to John the Baptist. In verse 16, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting up upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. What did we just read in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6? But without faith it is impossible to please God. We just read in Matthew chapter 3, verse 17, God speaking about his son in whom he is well pleased. Jesus Christ had faith, faith in works. He had faith in God the Father and the will, submitting himself to the will of God for his life. 
who became obedient to, to death, even the death of the cross, dying for the sins of Israel, but not only Israel, but for the sins of the world that was revealed to the Apostle Paul. And by that faith and work and finished work on the cross at Calvary, God was satisfied with that. And now we've been given this gift of faith, the faith of Jesus Christ. It's a gift of God. That's why Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith. And let's look at that. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, For by grace are you saved through faith. And see that semicolon there? And that not of yourselves. So that faith is not yourselves. It's the faith of Jesus Christ. It even, even explains it right there further. It is the gift of God. One more passage of scripture in Galatians. Galatians chapter 3, verse 22. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. So this faith of Jesus Christ is a gift given to those that believe. And it's by the faith of Jesus Christ that our pattern, the Apostle Paul, lived by. Let's go back. Galatians 2, verse 20. Paul writes, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And the NIV, ESV, NLT, New King James, all those other translations, they do the same thing here. They change of to end. So it's all about you trying to live by your faith. And man, I did this for nine years and it was exhausting. And it wasn't until I realized that it's by his faith that I've been saved. It's by his faith that I live. And that it's purely by the grace of God, according to the riches of the glory of his grace and his purpose and his will, that I now can live. I've been made free. I'm complete in him. I'm not lacking anything. And I didn't do anything to deserve it. I just received it. I just believed and I trusted in Christ. That's it. And the, the faith of Jesus Christ is mentioned at least eight times in the authorized King James Bible, which I believe is the pure, perfect, and preserved word of God for us today. Can you get truth out of all the other Bibles? Sure you can. But you're getting half-truths, and a half-truth is a lie. Do you want something that is 100% accurate, the words of God, or do you want something that's 80%? For me, I'd want something that I know that I could take to the bank, know and trust that this is 100% accurate. And I think that is the number one thing that a lot of believers should consider because it lines up with the next point, which is, which apostle are you following today? I shared a post on Facebook this is something that I shared a, a while back, and it was just simply looking at 2, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 11. The King James Bible says, where Paul writes to Timothy, Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. And you can clearly look at all the other translations, ESV, NIV, NLT, SAB, Amplified. They all remove of the Gentiles. And someone asked the question, you know, well, what's your point? Well, the point that I was trying to make there is if you don't understand who your apostle is and you don't understand that there is a distinction between Peter and Paul's ministry and that according to Galatians 2 verse 7 the gospel of the circumcision was committed to Peter and the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed to Paul and you get down into the nitty-gritty details of the doctrine that they were both commanded by the Lord Jesus Christ to preach they are light and day differences there which leads into point number three, rightly dividing the word of truth. Just as God in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, divided the light from the darkness, God instructs us in 2 Timothy 2.15 that in order to study his word, we need to be rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to separate truth from truth. We need to separate the truth that God committed to the Apostle Peter to the ministry of the circumcision, to those 12 tribes of Israel, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, from the truth that God committed to the Apostle Paul, who was a blasphemer, 
cut outside from the promises of the gospel of the circumcision, who God committed the gospel of the uncircumcision, that it's a gospel of grace, not of works like it was for Peter, and that we're saved by grace through faith, and it's the gift of God, the faith of Jesus Christ, given to those who just simply believe that God's grace is enough. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross at Calvary, shedding his innocent blood, dying for our sins, and being resurrected the third day for our justification, that we have now been made complete and received everything that we need in Christ Jesus, period. They were justified by works over here, according to Peter's gospel. They had to do works. They had to keep the law with Peter's gospel. With Paul's gospel, Christ abolished the law and the commandments in his flesh. He blotted out the handwriting of ordinances, nailing them to the cross. There's two different things. And if you don't understand that and you're following Peter, you're following a different gospel. Think of obedience training, right? I have two dogs. I have a German Shepherd and I have a terrier, uh, 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 mixed terrier mix. And when you're taking a dog through obedience training, you tell the dog sit, the dog sits, you give that dog a reward. You tell the dog lay down, lay down, you give that dog a reward. If you tell the dog to sit and they lay down, are you going to give that dog a reward? No, you're not. The same thing applies spiritually. Paul was the apostle of the Gentiles that was given this task to make the Gentiles obedient in faith and verity. Peter never went to the Gentiles. It was unlawful for him to keep company with a man of another nation. People say, oh, you're magnifying, you're, you're worshiping Paul. No, we're not worshiping Paul. We're magnifying his office. Paul writes in Romans chapter 11, verse 13, For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify in mine office. Magnify. Think of a magnifying lens. Look at that scripture. He's the apostle of the Gentiles. Now let's look what magnify what Christ commanded the, the apostle Peter in Matthew chapter 10 verse 5. In Matthew chapter 10 verse 5 it says, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans and you not, but go rather unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Peter never went to the Gentiles. Paul was the only one that went there. So the question is, which apostle are you following? This is the very thing that the Corinthians fought over in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 12. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am a Paul, and I have Apollos, and I have Cephas, and I have Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of the Paul? Then Paul resolves this question later in the book, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So if you want to follow Christ today, you got to follow the man that God appointed and was the chosen vessel to be sent and preached among the Gentiles. Gentiles meaning all nations, everybody. Because there's no Jew or Gentile today. We're all on an even playing field because of what happened with the nation of Israel. They fell, they diminished, and they were cast aside according to Romans chapter 11. And right now, God is dispensing his grace. We're in the dispensation of the grace of God. And it's this time period that we're living in. And this time period will end at some point once the great catching up of the church, the body of Christ happens, and God continues his prophetic program with the nation Israel. So point number three being rightly dividing the word of truth. You can't read James chapter 2 and read Romans chapter 4 looking at them and seeing that there's a difference. One is justified by faith with works. The other one's just justified by faith. One sit. One is lay down. You can't sit and lay down at the same time. You got to choose one. And when you rightly divine the word of truth, we know that Peter was sent to the circumcision. Paul was to the Gentiles. Paul is our example. Paul is our pattern. So it's just by faith, not of works. And number four is what is the gospel? 
And if you don't understand that there's two Gospels in the Bible because you don't have the right book, this one would be very confusing. Let's go to Galatians chapter 2, verse 7. Paul writes, But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. So Peter and Paul had two different gospels there. Peter's gospel was repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and thou shalt receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Paul's gospel is Christ died for our sins. He shed his blood for the forgiveness of sins, was buried and rose again the third day for our justification. And you have been saved by grace through faith, not of works. Just simply trust in Christ. His grace is sufficient. You can't do anything to earn your salvation. You can't repent of your sins. You can't uh, confess your sins. You can't do anything. It's a gift. It's just simple faith and belief and trust in Christ. Which one are you believing? Because I fear that a lot of people today and a lot of Christianity is believing that they're saved by doing all these works. That was a different gospel. That's not a gospel of grace. That's a gospel of works. Faith and works. Jews have always had to do faith and works according to the Bible. 80% of the Bible is all about that in the earth, in the nation of Israel. Faith and works. Just the body of Christ, it's all about grace. We're under the dispensation, we're living in the dispensation of the grace of God. It is possible to believe in God, believe the Bible, but not be saved. Just you go and you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You look and see where Jesus Christ was going. He was going into the synagogues. He was going into the temple. Who were gathering in the synagogues and the temples? They were believing Jews. They believed in God and they believed in the law. But they rejected who Christ was. They put him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead. Just as there were lost believers in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John... There are lost believers today. How do we know that? Look at what it says, what Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. Paul writes, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, that's Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. There was a time in my life where I couldn't answer what the gospel was. I had believed all these other Gospels. Satan is using preachers today, preaching all these another Jesuses by another spirit and another Gospel. There's only one place that God declares the Gospel in the Scriptures. It's 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1-4. through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the Gospel which I preached unto you, which also you received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. If you look at verse 3, where it says, How that Christ died for our sins, put your name right there where you see our. Christ died for your name, sins. And that he's buried and that he rose again the third day according to scriptures. Now that might sound foolish. But that's how God is operating today. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. God appointed one man to be a preacher and a teacher and apostle of the Gentiles. It's the apostle Paul. Gave him the revelation of the mystery. Proclaimed and made known what was that secret. And that secret was that Christ died for our sins. Not just Israel, all the world. And it wasn't revealed until God showed it to him. 
When did you believe the gospel of Christ? When did you believe that Jesus paid it all? Made, paid that ransom, shedding his blood for your, the forgiveness of your sins, making you righteous in God. When did you believe in the grace of God, that his grace is sufficient, that it truly was a gift that he saved you, and that there wasn't anything that you could do to potentially save you from a sinner's death in hell? When did you believe that you've truly only been justified by faith and faith alone? When did you just trust Christ? Trust in Him. If you've never done that before, I so strongly beseech you and urge you to do so right now. We are not promised tomorrow. Things can drop and change in an instant. And if you're struggling with unbelief right now, a great prayer from an example in the Gospels is, Lord, help me thine unbelief. Maybe you need to take a walk and have a heart-to-heart with the Lord between you and you and just resolve in your mind that maybe you've been wrong, you've you've been taught things that were wrong, and you need to repent, change your mind. Change your mind about those things. I had to do that. It took me a long time. And I'm still unlearning things. So to sum that all up, four things that all believers should consider. Number one is what Bible are you using? For me, it's the authorized King James Bible. This is something you're going to have to examine in your own time. Two is which apostle are you following? Are you following Peter's gospel of the circumcision? Or are you following Paul's gospel of the uncircumcision? Because there's different commandments there. One's for the Gentiles for faith and obedience. It's Paul. Three is rightly dividing the word of truth. Paul was given that instruction, gave it to Timothy, and that's the only verse in your Bible that God tells you how to study it. Separating truth from truth. Separating Paul's epistles from the other rest of the books, the 53 books. Paul wrote 13 books. How do we know it? His name is the first name word in every single one of his epistles. According to 2 Thessalonians 3.17, I'll go there. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 17, Paul writes, The salutation of Paul with mine own hand, which is the token in every epistle, so I write. So God made a promise in the scriptures that Paul's name would be in every single one of his letters. You read Romans through Philemon, what's the first word you'll see? Paul, 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 13 times. Then when you get to the book of Hebrews, what's the first thing that you see? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. God who at sun-dry times and in divers' manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. So, when you're rightly dividing, all you're doing is you're acknowledging the truth for what God's doing today in the letters of Romans through Philemon. And number four, we discuss the gospel. If our gospel be hid, it is hidden in our loss. Folks, the gospel's on display in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. I encourage you to go read that now. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Just trust in him. Stop trying. Start trusting. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.